this mission is becoming more promising with every passing moment. After what felt like an eternity of searching, we finally made contact with a man willing to provide us with vital information. He hinted at the possibility of a breakthrough, mentioning a friend of his who possesses a helicopter. This friend, he claimed, could fly us over the area where we suspect my cousin is being held. The mere prospect of gaining access to a helicopter fills us with a renewed sense of hope. The advantages of an aerial reconnaissance mission are immeasurable. It would allow us to survey the landscape, assess the number of adversaries we might encounter, understand their defenses, and strategize for our impending rescue mission. In essence, it would be a game changer, significantly increasing our chances of success. Currently, we are en route to the residence of this potentially invaluable ally. Our hearts are heavy with anticipation and uncertainty as we approach this crucial meeting. We can only hope that he will share our vision and offer his support, enabling some of our party to take flight and gather essential intelligence on the target area. With a little bit of luck and perhaps a dash of fate on our side, we will finally be on the path to liberating my cousin from the clutches of the Livonian Army Detention Center. The thought of reuniting with him and bringing him home is a beacon of light in an otherwise dark and uncertain mission. This endeavor has been fraught with challenges and risks, but our determination remains unwavering, and the possibility of a successful rescue is now closer than ever before. Uh, the the guy's gonna be flying. Oh, oh, sorry, I thought you were (laughs) co-pilot. Yeah, I'll be sitting co-pilot. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, do you guys wanna... um, Pat and I can just... Sit in the chopper, and if you guys want to drive closer, well, we got we the have, radios. Yeah, we have radios now. So, well, I was gonna. I didn't know if it was. I should look on the map. Just thinking, radio range. If we were to stay here and they're flying over there, if we'd be out of range or not. Five thousand meters. Oh, okay. We should be okay. We can just start heading that way. Hello. I just got a phone call from my friend saying one of you guys needed a flight. Let's get there. Yep. Okay. So it's so me, me and this guy. We're just going to go flying around this, the town and looking at a few places. Oh, sounds good. Why for the guns? No reason. Uh, you know? It's probably just that's what I'm asking. Hunting for fish. Hunting for fish. Fish in a barrel. Hold on, hold on. You don't have to be my chauffeur. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, you were in the back seat. <laughs> there we go. Hmm, <laughs> Mr. Pitts. Thanks, <laughs> Yeah. You guys have a flare or something to fucking pop your shit? Get yes, we do. Yep, I got. <laughs> I got a hand flare, so be on the lookout for that. It came or- in handy. That's so yourself, it might come in handy. Boom. <laughs> Knowing my luck, look for the frag grenade. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> look for the boom. Nothing to see here, officer. Nothing to worry about. Kind of jealous the guy's got a helicopter just We're sitting just out in the chilling. open. Yeah, just chilling out in his front yard. It's whatever. That's the dream. No big deal, right? Just a helicopter. Whew. That's how we go out, is by <laughs> a, a train crossing. <laughs> Ooh, what about this? Oh, no, it doesn't look like it's going to... Looking at us. Well, guys, um, I don't know if we want to go and check this artillery base just what, what we got right now there's plenty and plenty of stuff that they have to kill us with yeah, that's pretty nasty in there really yeah. nasty just from the aerial view alone i seen t or four t-55s three or four t-55s at the arty base oh damn okay what's it looking like at the detention center i couldn't tell Apparently the artillery corps and the armor corps works together a lot, so they could just be getting serviced, but yeah, that's big man. Uh, the... Yeah, the place where they're keeping him is right above the artillery 
place. Um, two radio towers mark where that is. It looks pretty small. Military base right there. Yep. Probably pull off in here. Um, just at the detention center, it's, you know, you got snipers, MGs, and a lot of foot soldiers, but it'd be a lot easier to try to get in there as quick as possible and get out. Do you think that's something me and Snack can handle? Uh, there's apparently, uh, there's about 30 or 40 guys just in the barracks alone. Um, might be better if we land and support you guys. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that many people, definitely. Pat, you got the suppressed weapon too, right? Good talk. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Because I was thinking if he's got the suppressed weapon, we probably want him on point trying to take out as many guys as he can before we yeah, actually so open up. If we attack yeah. this detention center, we got to do it real quick because at the uh, armored place, there's, I don't know exactly what kind of tanks, I, I can't identify them, but there's just armor everywhere and a lot more foot soldiers. This might be the only chance we've got yeah, for a gotta, while. Yeah, we got to get them. Yeah, this is probably our only shot. We need to go grab them. Um, where can you land? Uh, pilot here is saying that they usually have one to two QRF tanks always ready. Um, we don't have so any. So whenever we attack, we really got to go quick. Right? Hopefully nobody, they, nobody took AT. I don't think so, but hopefully they got something in there. Something like that. They gotta have something, right? You'd you'd hope so. Um. Is there a good place for us to land and try to regroup with you guys? Yeah, that's what we were asking you. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, a lot of this is really close to the base. You see, um, I'm going to put a box around the circle. Uh, he said that if he tries to land anywhere but his house, they're going to freak out. So we're going to head back there and start heading your way, but if you meet us halfway. I don't remember how we got there. Do we want to head northwest? Way. There. And don't forget, it's at the top of a hill too, so we might not spot anybody until they're super close. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, Wait a minute. I'm running around with a 9 by 18 SMG, 25 rounder, pushing up onto a fortified position. <laughs> if only we knew when that already was going off. Use that to mask some sounds. Is that radio tower where it's at? Yep. Alright. On the yep. right, there's one on the. It's in between the two radio towers.
Yo, I got eyes on on one guy on the building. There's sandbags just right to the west at 200. And there's somebody on the second story. I think that's one of the barracks. This is really not a good idea. Why does he want to take the shadow room with it? Oh, guy in the barracks, or? Yeah, the barracks. Get down the balcony. Nice shot. Two guys in a machine gun nest outside that. Right there. Yep. Make sure to land it in loud. I really wish, wish we had another surprise. Oh, the two guys on the roof? Yeah. To the south of us. Coppers are holding in the barracks building. I don't see how we're going to do this without getting loud. Well, we're going to end up getting loud. It's just a matter of how long can we stay. This guy's been there for a while by himself. I'd say you're clean, but... I thought I saw a second guy up there, though. Oh, shit. Come on. Far as MG nest. Guy to the front. Oh, nice shot. Another guy coming out that same door. Pat is down. MG gunner on the left is dead. Holding these barracks.
I got gotcha. you. Hold on, I might have to. Alright, Pitts, I'm stopping your bleeding. Yeah, Try to cover you this second. Alright, I stopped the bleeding on his chest. Oh, he's back up. That was horseshit. They shouldn't have heard me. Right, we need to go. We gonna check this barracks? Yeah, we need to check this. I mean, that is a jailhouse over there too, though. Yeah. Snack, you wanna go with secret? Me and Pitts will go clear that. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll go with secret here. Right, we're going room by room. Yeah. All right, opening. Nothing here. Okay. Gonna open that. Yep, and open. I don't see anything left. Yeah, bodies or body bags this yeah. room's empty opening got it, got it, got it. Up, up, up. man you guys suck <laughs> <laughs> all right ready left looks clear it's clear all right last one on okay, this, this one's clear he's not here I think we got him. Cousin Peter. Cousin. I got you, man. We're coming in through uh, front no, door. Going on. Yeah, we got him. Any minute now. Hey, here. we've we've got him. Should we uh, leave the same way we came in? Yeah, let's go back. Or actually, there's a there's some vehicles out here. I hear other vehicles. We're gonna have to move quick. We have some armored Vicks over here. Alright, I think they're coming in at the gate. We gotta move quick. We wanna take this BRDM at the end? Yeah, let's, let's put him in here and let's go. I can't. Alright, he's in. Hey, do you want to do two in this and then two in the? Yeah, I can't get in. Gun? I can't get in the BRDM. I, someone's got a part in me. Shit's getting ropey, boys. I don't know how to part in somebody. It's uh, Ace and Rex. Alright, we're gonna go left. Hey, uh, enemy right up front on the road. Two out front, or three out front. See him. Oop. Nice. Jeez. Whoa. That was man of steel. Y'all good? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Just ran over Superman. Fair enough. <laughs> You're gonna have to guide me where we're going. I'm just trying to get away. I say we need to get fucking boogieing before they send a tank or something from the airfield after us. Yeah, just, I'm just hauling away from here. I don't even know if I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, you uh, are. You are. I yeah, don't just, think you are. But I've got it. He's going the right way. All right, gotcha. Uh, continue this way. So much for uh, the blue sedan and the uh, the truck. Are we trying to head back? We'll have to go right make to sure we tell that guy that uh, castle. We lost his truck. I I mean I think so. Okay. I think we'll understand. So at 
place with the helicopter. Hey, you might have something to shoot down. Yes, sir. It's behind us, southwest, right above us. Oh, uh, south. Um, uh, left? Yeah. Yeah, as long as we're heading northwest, we should be okay. Alright. You know, this does make it pretty easy for them to spot where we're going. I mean, I think yeah. we have to, uh, be careful about heading back to the to the castle yeah oops I'm heading east which might not actually be too bad of a thing hey um yeah. two o'clock hey that's that's friendly right there that's friendly that don't shoot at the blue one that's my bad the, that's our guy yeah, yeah that's, that's our guy. guy what's he doing in the helicopter uh all right, so the one with the lights on, that's bad. That's <laughs> I think our... <laughs> oh! Did you get him? No, our guy just crashed into him. After what we had just witnessed, the ride back to our base was a somber and contemplative one. The weight of the recent events hung heavily in the air, and silence enveloped our group. In some ways, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride. A strange, bittersweet pride, being part of something so significant that people like the brave pilot were willing to lay down their lives for. It was a testament to the sacrifices made in the name of a greater cause. However, the sense of pride was overshadowed by an overwhelming sadness. The pilot's death was a stark reminder of the harsh realities of our mission. Like me, he hadn't asked for any of this. When the time came, he did his part and acted heroically. He was a shining example of courage in the face of adversity. It made me reflect on my own role in this conflict. If, at any point, I were to meet a fate similar to his, I could only hope to face it with the same bravery. Amid the sorrow, I found solace in the knowledge that his sacrifice had not been in vain. We were able to make our escape, and with my cousin Peter now safe by our side, I have accomplished what brought me into this group. However, I have been part of too much, and there is no turning back now. I am resolved to see this through, whatever challenges or perils it may hold. Peter's return to us is a ray of hope in these trying times. His leadership and skills have been sorely missed by the Freedom Fighters. We are hopeful that with him fighting alongside us once again, our struggle will become more focused and effective, bringing us closer to the day when our fight for freedom will come to a triumphant end. We carry the memory of the fallen pilot with us as a reminder of the sacrifices made in pursuit of our cause, and a driving force in our unwavering determination to see the mission to its conclusion. Come back for more.